Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So everybody and their mama been asking me to do a review on the whole Revolt TV Summit that Diddy put on this past weekend in Atlanta. So if you guys do not know, a clip from that summit went viral between T.I. and Candace Owens. Candace Owens is the woman that Kanye shouted out about a year and a half ago. She's a huge Trump supporter. Um, she's a staunch Republican. So basically they're on the panel talking. And so T.I. asks Candace Owens when America was great. Was it during the crack era? Was it when women didn't have the right to vote? And Candace Owens is trying to apply back to T.I. And T.I. keeps cutting her off. So this is a clip that went viral. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Answer this. Please answer this. I have a question. So, I have a question. So wait, please, wait, wait. please just Tip. allow me this one outburst. Please. I have a question. When you say make America great again, which period are we talking about? The period when women couldn't vote? The period when we were hanging from trees? I'll answer. Uh, 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 like the crack era? Which period in America are you trying to make I, America I would, like again? So I, I actually think that I would I would totally rock a hat right now that said make black America great again. Because black no, America make America, before, we're talking about make America. That wasn't the no, question. I, answer, I am answering Which your question. Which period was America great that we're trying to replicate? Well, uh, Which era was it? Tell me. I think, I'll answer your question. Tell I'm me. I'm ready to answer your question. Which era was it? What? Which era was so great? You, here's the thing that you guys are forgetting. America was actually one of the first. Slavery was all over the world. The all question. over the world. America Man, was, I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay, so why are you saying, oh? Amen. America I was one of the first like countries. I want to like you question, so bad. I'm trying you're to answer so your question. Smart. I want right, to like you so much. I can't answer the I question. I want to hear you. I want to be able to hear them. I want to be able to hear them. If you answer the question and you're just going to boo when I say slavery was all over the world, which is a fact, why are you booing a fact? Because Finish you're making light of no, I'm not. You're making light I of the enslavement I'm not of making... people that look like us. You can't All make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breeze over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So a lot of people want to know my opinion about the summit in general, okay? So we can start with that clip. In my personal opinion, I wasn't feeling how that played out. At the end of the day, even if you don't agree with Candace, even if you're not a fan of her talking points, it's about respect. One thing I noticed about this entire Revolt Summit, it was way too many emotions going on from the crowd to the people on the stage to Pete Diddy who couldn't stop jumping his ass up and clapping and hitting on the stage. He was doing the damn most. Check this out. This is my thought. This is my thought. To present to every local Yeah. All right, y'all just seen P. Diddy jumping every damn five seconds. It's almost like he was also trying to get shine from the sideline, okay? The one person I can say that was not running on emotion was Killer Mike, okay? And I really like Killer Mike. I got a chance to meet him a few months ago. Very, very down-to-earth brother. And Killer Mike brings nothing but facts. You know what I'm saying? He does a lot in the community, especially down there in Atlanta. And so when I see a lot of these people on the panel and they're going back and forth, they're not allowing each other to talk, it just looks kind of bad, especially the whole display between T.I. and Candace. And, you know, like I said, one of the things that bothered me with this was how the crowd was reacting, okay? There was one part when Candace was talking and she was talking about and how the welfare system basically destroyed the American family. And I thought she was making some really good points. You had somebody in the audience shouting and trying to challenge her and trying to distract her train of thought. It got so bad that Killer Mike had to jump in and say, you know what, y'all need to shut the hell up, let her speak. At the end of the day, she's not saying anything different from what Louis Farrakhan said many years ago. So it's almost like, depending on who the messenger is, is what people are willing to receive. And I didn't like that at all. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Immigration, if you're looking at the numbers, every new birth in this country 60% of all new births are Hispanic Americans and the Democrats are about you listen listen you're, you're saying mm, uh, let me let me let me get to the point I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with it they are 
I, I say illegal is the new black because it's true. And there's a reason why they're, they're advocating for open borders. Right now, our vote means a lot, but new births of black Americans have stagnated. The population growth within black America has stagnated. So the things that I pay attention to are the numbers. I pay attention to the birth rates in this country, which is why I'm, I'm pro putting something down to stop illegal immigration. The second thing that I think is really important, and you may have heard me testify in front of Congress, is the illiteracy rates that are facing black America. If you look historically at what the plantations were when we were slaves, there were three things that were necessary for them to run. The first was our ignorance. Black Americans were not allowed to learn how to read unless we would have our limbs chopped off. And that was because an educated mind cannot be enslaved. So the fact that our education, that our schools are in this condition in the inner cities and all throughout America and not a single candidate is talking about it is problematic to me. I think that that's a huge negotiating tool for me. We need to be talking about the inner city schools. Another component, and this is the biggest issue that I think is facing black America today, which was important to uh, maintaining the plantations was the breakdown of family. The biggest issue facing black America is father absence. We have children that are growing up without their fathers in the home, and that is being incentivized by the government right now via the welfare system. When the government says we'll give you more money if you don't marry the father of your children, you are incentivizing bad behavior in our community. What happens when you remove a father from the home? This is why I do not mess with feminism at all. I'm not with it. This breakdown and mocking masculinity, making it seem like there's something wrong to be a man, all of this contributes to the breakdown of family. When you all right, remove- Hey, 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 hold on. So, hold on, brother, hold on. There's gonna be an opportunity for each of you to engage, but I wanna make sure this sister has the right to talk while she's here, that's why we invited her. So it's let okay. her say what she needs to say, and then let's keep it moving. Come on, y'all. The single, the single motherhood rate in the 1960s in black America, and they, th they, they thought that... Now, at a, the hold, single, on, hold on, at a I want to finish no, this. No, no, I'm, I'm, this is on your behalf. At a certain point, we can't be assholes. At a, at a certain point, these are black men and women, and in particular, these are black women. Like, I, like on, on some real G shit, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how you feel about her personally. Everything she has just said, Louis Farrakhan said for the last 25 fucking years. So, 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 uh, so, with no, and, and I don't know if she's a fan of Farrakhan, I know me and Tamika are. Bam. But, but, you cannot take the truth and be mad at who tells it to you. So just chill, bruh. Shut the fuck up. Let her say it and receive the information. That's it. Honey. All right, so you guys just saw what Killer Mike had to say. He was checking a lot of folks with facts and letting people know that at the end of the day, he may not always agree with Candace, but there needs to be a respect factor. And that's one thing I noticed when Candace and the other woman that was on the stage, um, the lighter skinned woman, um, they're both Republicans. Anytime they talked and they stated anything factual, it's like the audience didn't want to clap. The audience didn't really want to give them their props. But then if, um, I think her name was Tamika, the dark skinned woman on the stage, uh, stage um anytime they spoke or killer mike spoke or ti spoke the audience would cheer you know so i think a lot of people went into this with their emotions which was not a good look now to answer ti's point where he's yelling and saying when was america great when was america ever great for black people i cannot take ti seriously okay First and foremost, is, is America a perfect country? Absolutely not. Are there still black people out here going through the struggles and dealing with police brutality? Absolutely. But America can't be too bad when you go from being a felon, going to prison, coming out, getting your own reality TV show, starting a clothing line. When you go from being a trap boy to being a multimillionaire to the point where you're able to leave generational wealth for your children, America can't be that bad, okay? And this goes back to Tamika's point when she was saying that instead of just having, you know, talking points with celebrities and famous people, we need to hear from the regular people. You know what I'm saying? The prostitutes, the strippers, the trap boys. We need to hear from them and see what their take is. When we fly in looking fancy and having people that don't know anything about Miss Lucy's water being dirty and don't know anything about what's going on on the ground, we are missing them completely. We cannot talk about people without having them as part of the conversation. And more importantly, 
More importantly, I feel like so many of our spaces, even black spaces where we are organizing, are too elite for the people who we talk about. So if we are organizing without those who are the strippers, the scammers, the, you know, the people who have been cast out in our society, if they are not at the front of the conversation, we're just doing something to make ourselves feel good. We're not really doing anything for the people in our community. A lot of times with these discussions, they like to use celebrities to push different agendas, okay? So I can't take T.I. seriously when he's sitting here complaining and going back and forth with Candace Owens as if he's not part of the 1%. Like, like let's keep that real. At this point in time, T.I. has more in common with the Republican Party and the tax breaks that he was saying that he loves so much than he does with the poor people in the community of Atlanta, okay? I will never have anything negative to say about the financial benefits, the tax breaks that come from the Republican Party. I, I'm a rich person and you I white appreciate- folk rich. You dig what I'm saying? I'm Negro hey, rich. I, hey, listen, I, I appreciate all of the different tax breaks and the opportunity zone benefit, but it's when called we, a crooked clock is right twice well, a day. You're that's right, right. Called. And that's not to take nothing away from Ti, because I know Ti does a lot in the community. Ti does help out, but I just didn't like the way that he was jumping on her throat as if there's been no good points in America. And I love the fact that Killer Mike came in and said, you know, even though T.I. is my friend, I disagree with him. This is when America was great and he broke it down historically and factually because it totally caught Candace off guard. Y'all yeah, go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. I'll tell you when America was great. Seven years after the ending of the Civil War. Exactly what Hold I Candace, because you, uh, you didn't give the comment. So you weren't prepared for that one. Seven, no, but that's, that's not to jump on Candace because, again, I'm disagreeing with my friend. Seven years after the end of the Civil War, blacks within seven to 15 years accumulated over 15 million acres of land. Since, hold on, before we get to clapping because the niggas bought some shit. Black people were the only skilled labor in there. So if it was welding to be done, iron bending, cotton picking, it was black people. So instantly, your value became more. And Candace has a point. The point that she made about illegal immigration affecting you is it is going to affect you at some point. Why? If the Kegel Chicken Factory is hiring illegally illegal immigrants at an undercut on the rate, it affects the black people who live there who should be demanding 20 bucks an hour because they're being undercut. So when they get wiped out, they have to hire blacks, pay them, and unionize. So she's right on that. But hold the fuck on, I'm not finished. You have to remember that people who look like you immigrate too. So before you widely say, fuck them all, remember, America is always going to have a slave class. And if illegal immigrants or legal immigrants will not be the lowest paid workers, those in prison will be, and that always ends up looking like one of their sons. So it circles back around. So that's why people who are black, who are from two different plantations, got to get the fuck away from Massa long enough to say, how are we going to burn down both their fucking houses? Now. All right, so you guys just saw what Killer Mike had to say. So in my personal opinion, I feel like T.I. was there more for publicity purposes because I don't really feel like he added a whole lot to that conversation like Killer Mike and some of the others did. The guy in the yellow, I don't even know his name, he added nothing to the conversation at all whatsoever. Now, one person that was really upset that she was not invited to this dialogue was Angela Stanton. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen her before. She's always in my comment section on Instagram. She's always on the shade room. She is a staunch Trump supporter. She's from Atlanta. She's from the hood. She did time, you know what I'm saying? And she really believes in what Trump has to say. I'm here to dispel all rumors that this president is a racist. Trump is the one that took the birthplace of Martin Luther King Jr. and turned it into a national historic party. Trump is in fact the first president to assign $25 billion directly to HBCUs. He's also the first president to ever pass a bipartisan act like criminal justice reform, which the recipients, 91% of them, are black. 
And she felt like had she been invited on that panel, she'd have been able to hold her own, at least have Candace's back because she felt like Candace was getting tag team. So this is what Angela Statton had to say. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So Angela Statton says, so y'all had a political panel at the Revolt Summit right here in my city and didn't invite me? She says, it's obvious that I'm a threat. They don't respect Candace. They know souls would have been converted. I know what was done on purpose at Diddy, at Killer Mike, at Trouble Man. Hashtag facts, hashtag politics, hashtag Revolt Summit. So that is what she had to say. Some people agreed with her. Other people did not agree with her and felt like she was not needed on that panel. You know, I think at the end of the day, it needs to be about respect, okay? At the end of the day, we're all going to have differences of opinions. We're all going to see things differently. But I just did not like the way that the panel ran. The audience, to me, just felt like, you know, they were just running on emotion. And they're proof that they're lowering the IQs of a lot of people here through genetically modified foods, okay? Because literally... Literally, Candace would say something that was very similar to what Killer Mike was saying, but if Candace said it or the other woman on the stage said it, they would boo and jeer. Now, uh, young black men will be going home for Christmas because of criminal justice reform put in place by President Donald J. Trump. That impacts the Why black community. Why is nobody community. applauding that? Like, in a major oh, way. Absolutely. I mean, like the three people strikes are rule being done by the Democrats. Prison, Trump reversing. Who have been given harsh sentences. People have been in there for far too long. And you know how that happened? Because black people who are woke went to the Oval Office and said, how can we help black America? President, said, President Trump says, whatever I can do, I'll do it. You want, your, you want your basketball players coming back from China? I'll help you with that. You want ASAP Rocky? I'll make that phone call. Come. But then if Killer Mike said it, they would all, you know, applause and praise him. It showed to me how emotionally immature a lot of people are, that they get so enamored by big words like expeditiously and, you know, the big words that T.I. says. But then as soon as T.I. got flustered, all he did was start cussing and saying that what she was saying was bullshit. And it's like, well, where are these big words? Why are we not resorting to just cussing at each other as opposed to, you know what I'm saying, just having a mature dialogue? And then my thing is, there was so many good points made on that stage, especially by Killer Mike, who, in my personal opinion, him and Candace, they definitely held their own. They both did a really good job with their talking points. And for me, when they went to the audience to let them ask whatever question they wanted to ask, I was really disappointed in the questions being asked. I think, you know, uh, Jeff, who was the moderator, I think they should have had certain questions asked beforehand. They should have vetted the questions. You had people up there going on and on about shit that had nothing to do with the panel discussion. Some man was up there talking about, you know, how he's not able to get funding for his art but I think the one question that just kind of threw me off was a dude who got up there and was basically you know saying he's a huge fan of T.I. he wears a cool clothing and he wants to know how he can get his music to T.I. so you sat here and watched this panel for an hour and that's the question that you asked how was your mixtape going to T.I. supposed to help the black community so I, I just feel like there's a lot of really emotionally immature people there who weren't really there to receive a message they were just there because oh we get a chance to see a celebrity we get to be involved in something y'all go ahead and check this out what's going on how y'all doing man p did appreciate you for this uh event man this shit is lit i love all this culture talk but tip my question for you og you know all i do is a cool you know what i'm saying i just got a question i was talking to molly in the studio and i was asking her like man if i uh i was asking like how should i come and talk to tip you know knowing that he's my idol you know what I'm saying to ask a question because i know you got all artists coming at you my question would be what would you say to an artist that's trying to approach you that, that look up to you, what to say to you. You dig what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I was, I, I was, I was listening to I got you, I was Candace. listening to it, I was listening to it. Okay. I would say, honestly, Tip actually be on his Instagram, I would send a picture of me at the conference with, with my SoundCloud, and, I, and I'm pretty sure he'll listen to it. All right, so you guys just saw what that gentleman had to say. So like I said, in my personal opinion, there were some good points that were made during the Revolt Summit. Other points, I just was not feeling it. And I felt like, you know, there needed to be a respect factor. You had, I think my son was kind of arguing with Killer Mike from the audience. You had the audience, you know, in the background booing and jeering at certain points. You know, I think that when we go into having discussions like this, especially when it comes to politics, people need to, you know, keep their emotions in check. 
and just go in with an open mind because that's what I did. When I went to go watch this, I didn't go in with the mindset that, you know, Candace is a bedwincher or a coon and I don't want to hear nothing she has to say or that Killer Mike is a, you know, up and coming Malcolm X. I went in with a blank slate. I wanted to hear what all these people had to say from Tamika to the guy in yellow. You know, I just went in open-minded and it seemed like a lot of people in the audience just couldn't do that. And even some of the people on the panel, you know, the, the back and forth and the bickering, like Candace tried to hold her own as much as she could, but that audience was not here for her. And then the fact of her and T.I. going back and forth is what went viral when there was so many good points made in that whole hour long discussion. It's just sad, but that just goes to show you that drama is what's always going to be pushed out there as opposed to the facts, as opposed to the things that really make you think. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning the Revolt TV Summit. How did you guys feel about it? Did you guys agree with the way T.I. handled Candace? Do you feel like, you know, he shouldn't have cut her off like that? Or do you feel like, you know what, Candace is a Republican, so you don't care, and what T.I. said was correct? And then how do you guys feel about the talking points that Killer Mike was making? Did you guys agree with him? And then how did you guys feel about the other panelists that were there? And then do you agree with me that many people in the audience just came off as emotionally immature because of the way they were acting and going back and forth and, you know, making noise and booing as opposed to just letting these people on the panel speak and be their voice? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.